Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Today is January 23rd, 2020, and welcome to another live stream. And today we're talking about investing in personal finance, an open discussion. And we've done a few of these. This is the first one we're doing for the 2020 new year. Um, <laughs> Kupri, Kuptri, how are you doing? Kuptri. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. You popped in quick. Uh, usually it takes me about uh, a minute to do a little intro for these live streams. Uh, thanks for popping in. Uh, what I'm doing right now is just going to pop out the chat, get myself ready uh, for uh, people coming in. And it usually takes a few minutes for people to roll in. Some people are quick on the trigger. Um, and again, we've done a few of these in the past. Um, I think we started doing these in 2019, maybe 2018. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I didn't interrupt. <laughs> it's always fun to have people roll in right away, really. Because uh, at the beginning, I'm sort of in a holding pattern. And I usually show everybody what I have as refreshments and a little bit of energy. I got my chocolate tea again today. So I got some chocolate tea. I usually always have a little bit of water. The chocolate tea right now is really bitter. I made it strong. So I got some water. I also have, I'm still in recoup mode. Popping vitamin C's and zinc pills now, stuff like this. I got some uh, mandarins that I cut up. Delicious, right? Need the vitamin C in the winter. And there is dark chocolate dark mint chocolate and this goes amazing with citrus right dark chocolate anything citrus uh usually oranges or mandarins and stuff and um what do you call it and pineapples and actually chocolate dark chocolate goes with everything <laughs> so i've got some dark chocolate <laughs> right so i'm popping mandarins and popping chocolate sometimes together and they go fantastic, right? Give ourselves a little boost. Aside from that, uh, just like politics, just like economics, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, right? In regards to personal finance as well. The decisions that people have to make and, or we have to make to figure out how we can place ourselves properly in this changing economic system, right? Um, and we'll see where the conversation takes us. And it's an open discussion. We can talk about anything um, anybody wants, right? Awesome. Good to see you feeling better. I usually just drink coffee and, and uh, stews until I sweat it out. Yeah, well, I did that for the first 10 days. But this is just something that's lingering around. It's crazy. I met a lot of people that say, oh, I'm not sick anymore. They just ha still have the cough just the way I do in the chest, right? So um, and people are low energy. Um, it is what it is, right? Sometimes viruses mutate and, you know, they hit you. And as long as you can come out of this, you're stronger. Your immune system's stronger. You just have to come out of it, right? The Scarlet Phoenix. Good evening. Good evening. Hope you're doing well. Taco, how's life? Haven't seen you for a while. Hazardous HDTV. Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Hope everybody's doing really well. I've been, I've been listening to lectures uh, <laughs> this morning, catching up on news. I got up early. I don't know. I'm just getting up early. There's so much stuff going on that. Uh, I started editing some video. We loaded up the anime video yesterday, and I got a couple of more that I'm trying to load up to BitChute. BitChute's having a hard time processing videos, so sometimes it's taking a couple of days to process. So I don't really release the videos on YouTube until BitChute's done processing as well. All right? So there's a couple of segments coming up, shorts from the previous live stream we did uh, regarding politics, where we talked a lot about anime and stuff. But the next two are one is regarding politics and the other one is regarding personal finance which is one of the reasons why i decided to do the personal finance video right now okay birdie here how are you doing hello hello i'm okay just my boss doesn't have 
any work for me and i'm a little worried oh what are you you were doing uh, in the summer you were doing camp stuff taco no 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 you weren't doing camp stuff you were you were trying to get a job uh, you're in the uh in eastern europe i believe and you're trying to get a job with one company it didn't work out but you did end up getting a job for the sharma place if i remember correctly let me know if my mind's uh, functioning better than my <laughs> my energy on other things right i try to ride figure my way through it until i uh, get to the triggers to remind me what it was that we were doing i think sharma we were working at a restaurant But one of the reasons I decided to do set up this personal finance live stream is because the topic came up on the last stream with the politics stream mentioning that Amazon and Netflix don't pay any taxes. And I sort of went off on a little, you know, three or four minute rant saying why that is the case. And that's a segment that I'm that I cut up, I'm gonna load up in a couple of days. So I figured we'd open up the platform and allow the discussion to grow from there if anyone wants to talk about it yeah uh, now I'm in construction Oh, construction and winter isn't a good season no winter is a brutal season for construction and for some reason I was in construction for a while as I mentioned before and in the winter you just went downtime right in the spring summer and you would really kick it up a lot right because the weather cooperates so if you're building houses and whatnot you don't want to be rained on and then in the fall you taper off because fall here fall winter where i am it rains a lot and you rarely saw house constructions or constructions with wood 20 years ago 30 years ago uh, in the winter now i'm seeing a few houses being built in the winter and those aren't houses that i would want to buy because they're sitting there they're wood construction in my part of the world right and plywood and sometimes um, particle board where it's just glues they're using a set of uh, what do you call it plywood and they just keep being rained on for three months until they build a house and usually they start they start putting on the finishing stuff close everything off before the before the wood is dry so what you end up getting is brand new houses that could possibly have mold growing in them which is my god people are plopping down a million dollars for a house and they're buying a house that has mold in it built in <laughs> it's crazy to me right i guess that's the economic model right that's what's pushing the construction so much and uh, people are just trying to cash out as fast as they can right um so that's my little take on construction in the winter depends what you're building though if you're building skyscrapers and stuff like this is concrete you just need the dry weather in, in large part anyway for the most part uh, when you're pouring down the concrete once the concrete's all set up and the pillars are all set up you can build around that right gadget gadget effects how are you doing welcome welcome to another live stream hope you're doing well hope you're doing well it's very chill here for some reason like not weather wise but everybody's like pretty down low more chocolate chocolate and this i just watched a lecture this morning that i've linked up in technology on our discord page in the heavy technology section and it was about um, let me give you the link for those of you in chat. It's about uh, manipulation of manipulation of society using technology, specifically focused on this lecture. Anyway, it was specifically focused on how search results can be can manipulate uh, specifically elections and whatnot but your investing habits your buying habits what you consume what you know right extremely so it's well worth watching okay and you don't really need to watch it 
the person only has one slide that he presents at the end right so you can play it and just do whatever you want around the house and just go go at it and it, it'll give you a really good appreciation of how our economic system political system social structures are changing and uh, how that reflects into in a big way into our personal finances right i'm in tile setting division okay so that's indoors and mostly i work indoors working on bathrooms kitchen and hallways and optionally stairways cool you're on your knees a lot eh? hard on the knees i hope you got the padding and stuff on your uh for your knees diabetic alien how are you doing long time i think long time anyway i'm just worried because if i don't get some work i might get in debt with my bills and if you do get in debt what you need to do taco is just work your ass off and get out of that asap right because when you're in debt a certain percentage whatever it might be is not going for you it's going towards servicing your debt just imagine all the debt that everybody carries and all the interest that they're paying just imagine if you were take you were able to take all that interest and just invest it put it put it away for yourself huge difference right that video was pretty eye-opening the like uh, the the video that i linked yeah there was i i consider myself to be pretty well versed in what you can do with data but i learned a lot from that video some of the stuff that seemed benign at first and then i went oh wow that is a very powerful tool that you can use to the one thing that i found really interesting is uh, the way they ordered the searches right um, just intuitively you know if you're looking at a search result data yeah the lecture how easily they could affect immediate action uh, from certain demographic yeah and do it in real time right <laughs> like real time oh do, 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 do. start it's like herd you know like a shepherd herding people in a certain direction the masses right incredible the beauty of it was at the end he says he can monitor that you can tell if they're using the they're using the data in a way to manipulate society in real time which is incredible right which is incredible the one in that is not free them some at sat so called alta. yeah the one in debt is not free with a couple of disclaimers right as the saying goes if you owe the bank a little money you're a slave to the bank if you owe the bank a ton of money that the bank can't write off you own the bank right that's one disclaimer the second disclaimer is this it really depends who you are in debt to right it used to be a lot easier you could go in debt and a lot of very 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 wealthy people in this world have done this multiple times they go into serious debt accumulated assets and then they protect the assets and then they declare bankruptcy and then they come do the same thing again again and again like even the president of the united states donald trump has gone into bankruptcy protection a few times i think if i recall correctly right i remember one time in the 90s no bank would give him a loan and he went around and he owed so much money to one bank finally he was able to cut a deal to not go full-on bankrupt and i think all he did was just uh rent out his name right because a lot of places where he had trump towers it's not really him building it he just put his name on it he's renting out his name right so it really depends on who you're in debt to now in 2005 the united states specifically the united states made it harder for american citizens to declare bankruptcy right they they passed the bankruptcy bill now if you don't know about the 2005 bankruptcy bill look into it basically most people's understanding of it now i was writing about it back then when it was happening they and i categorize it as one of the most important economic events before the collapse before the 2008 scam the collapse right but basically in 2005 they made it harder for american citizens to declare bankruptcy and my take and some other people who've looked at the data 
the reason they did that is because they knew the ship was going to hit the fan and they needed to protect their assets and pass the burden on to the individual right yeah the algorithm for youtube and google terrify me a bit for youtube it's mostly uh concern uh concern for me but i find a way search browsers monitor data from their users to just be very 1984 yeah big time diabetic alien and it's gone beyond 1984 in large part right uh, we get padding but one day i was sent to do grouting oh wow and my boss didn't have a pair so i had to find the sponge oh man taco uh, invest in a pair right uh for sure and if your boss says use a sponge or use something else in instead of the proper tools to do your work really think twice about it right your health is more important than uh, what your boss wants you to do right i mean i'm not saying put your job in jeopardy uh, to get fired and stuff like this but if that happens then don't rely on your boss to have paddings right go buy a used set and have those handy if you need to okay but yeah search result thing was weird too i would have never th uh, thought twice yeah yeah that's one of the reasons i started using DuckDuckGo, and i'm using um what do you call it the browser uh, uh, brave now so i'm starting to incorporate brave browser into uh, the browser that i'm using and i use like multiple different browsers and multiple different search engines and stuff like this so i'm trying to decentralize my own personal uh, search searches really mm -hmm. It should be 60 uh, frames per second. Ballistic Bobcat. Um, it's an HD 1080p, and I don't know if it's running a 60. Uh, I think that might be a setting that I had to set in uh, OBS, maybe. And initially, I'd set it up as uh, 10 something, but uh, I kicked it down. So I don't know. Is it lagging? car loan and house loan that does not make me own the bank no me and you don't own the bank <laughs> you gotta be some kind of special to go on the bank right some kind of special and parlay 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 to a level where you get in and you start accumulating a ton of debt right and if you accumulate a ton of debt you're also a slave as well right because there are there are powers above the bank individuals and if you step out of line they could easily pull the plug on you it's not a game that i'm interested in playing anywhere next month i might get into a small amount of debt so i'll call my boss if he has some work for me and work my ass off to save to save some money and cut out like two dollars out of my lunch budget to save 60 bucks per month yeah perfect and the bank said i can pay it pay in parts if i can't pay all at once awesome that's a good way of doing it taco all right you have to readjust your life a little bit once you go into that and things change up a little bit one of the main problems that people have regarding finances is they lose their source or source of revenue coming in but they still spend as if they had that source of revenue so one of the reasons people go into financial difficulty is because when things shake up right they forget that they've lost a certain percentage of revenue coming in and they still spend like mad one of the reasons they do that is because they're indebted in a way that they have to make payments on a monthly basis so they're a slave they have the house loans they have the car loans they have to feed the kids they have to feed the you know they got health insurance to pay they got this they got that they got that they just accumulated multiple monthly debts right so they can't go below a certain level and that's one thing you want to stay away from roth era or ron roth yami uh yami yami mar marzen that sounds like uh 
Uh, a Conan dialogue from a Conan comic. <laughs> nice. I was about to go to Brave when the token thing came out recently. Yeah, I haven't explored the token thing um, on Brave. Not really. Uh, I just loaded it up as a browser, right? And I'm slowly starting to use it a little bit more. I do transitions. I don't go boom in one shot. It's just I find the experience too traumatic to all of a sudden transfer somewhere else right so uh that's 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 what i'm doing right now slowly transitioning it'll take me a long time dante what's up brother how you doing man how can i make my my money work for me um and hopefully if uh bit shoot is uh able to process the videos in two days i'm gonna put out a little short little video about five minute video a discussion we had in the previous live stream on how you can be you should think about becoming financially independent right how you can make your money work for you basically in that video i mentioned there's really two ways you can do it right you can take your money and give it to someone else right to invest for you right you can go to wall street you can do private businesses or whatever it might be right or friends that want to start a business or whatever it might be the other thing you can do is look into whatever system i call them systems right but take a look at yourself figure out what you're interested in spending time in doing right and start looking on how that system functions on an economic level right if there is a possibility where you can enter that system learn about that environment right that you want to spend a lot of time and you enjoy spending time in right because it has a double effect that it provides you entertainment relaxes you makes your life much better and see if you can start generating money while playing in that system right and that in turn has multiple benefits to you one of them is it's something you want to do so fantastic you're doing something you love so that reduces your stress right the other thing it does if you're spending money to be functioning in that system right and if you're working somewhere somewhere and you're bringing wages then in most western countries what you can do is write off your expenses of exploring the system you want to enter right to possibly start making it turning it into money generating right and then you can start writing off against your salary right and that kicks you down to a lower tax bracket and if you're able to for example take a look at this let's assume let's assume you make fifty thousand dollars a year right now i don't know what the tax bracket what country you're in or whatever it is but let's assume a fifty thousand dollar tax bracket if you're earning fifty thousand dollars let's assume you're at a 30 percent tax bracket right so fifty thousand dollars flex how are you doing so fifty thousand dollars right and you have to pay 30 percent tax on that right so 30 percent three times 50 uh, five is 15 so that's fifteen thousand dollars i believe anyway it should be ten thousand and three thousand times five is fifteen thousand so you're making fifty thousand dollars a year right and you have to pay fifteen thousand dollars of it in taxes okay so now you're bringing home thirty five thousand dollars okay and you got to live on thirty five thousand dollars now let's assume where you live if you're able to kick yourself or let, not able to but let's just, because it's the wrong word let's assume fifty thousand dollars someone who brings in fifty thousand dollars is in a thirty percent tax bracket but if someone that brings in forty thousand dollars is in a twenty five percent tax bracket right so if you bring in forty thousand dollars if you're in a twenty five percent tax bracket right twenty five uh two thousand five hundred times four you're paying ten thousand dollars in taxes right so if you make fifty thousand dollars right you're in a 30 percent tax bracket and you bring in thirty five thousand dollars if you're in a 40 if you're making forty thousand dollars you're in a 25 percent tax bracket and you're bringing in thirty thousand dollars 
right? Because you're in a lower tax bracket now. So the difference there is 10,000. So on the 10,000, $50,000 compared to $40,000, you went from $50,000 bringing home $35,000 to $40,000 bringing in $30,000. The difference there is $5,000. So that extra $10,000 that you're making going from $40,000 to $50,000, you're paying 50% on that basically, right? If you can think about it that way. Now, just imagine if you're making $50,000 you're able to start up a business and it's a business really it's a system that you want to participate in but it's we'll call it a business but i'd like to call it a system because maybe it's some kind of hobby or whatever you want to do where you want to feed your hobby so you're buying stuff comic books toys art whatever it might be electronics collectibles human artifacts right so let's assume from that fifty thousand dollars you spent $12,000 on your business, right? So all of a sudden, you're now down to $38,000, right? You're down into the $40,000 tax bracket. So what you did at the beginning was pay $15,000 in taxes, right? You paid $30,000, oh, sorry, 30% 30 on $50,000 in tax um, of revenue income coming in right that was fifteen thousand dollars if you're able to kick yourself let's say down to forty thousand dollars now you need twenty five thousand dollar tax bracket so what they do is they don't tax you on thirty percent of the whole fifty thousand dollars now some places it might change it might be on the first twenty five thousand dollars it taxes this much and the next twenty five thousand dollars tax you this much. it's incremental i'm getting, being very general with this right but all of a sudden on the fifty thousand dollars if you can, you can kick yourself night night how are you doing if you can kick yourself down to the forty thousand dollar tax bracket now you're supposed to be only paying twenty five thousand uh, dollars twenty five percent taxes so on fifty thousand dollars you shouldn't have paid captain soju you shouldn't have paid fifteen thousand dollars you should have only paid two twelve thousand five hundred dollars so right away at the end of the year you're going to get twenty five hundred dollars back in taxes because you overpaid your taxes right if you have a hobby you're also accumulating assets hopefully they're going up in value right and you can start selling some of them and stuff like this so when it comes to becoming uh yeah yemin yemi when you ask how can i make my money work for me you have to learn about the economic system that you live in and find out what tools you have at your disposal to be able to do things like this because that's exactly what amazon and netflix and other corporations do not to pay taxes right they make it this much money and they divest into look at google look into how many different things they have their tentacles in right they divest all of a sudden they're saying oh we didn't make this much we actually had to do research and development and invest put our money in all these different places we made zero or we made negative to get taxed back right that's exactly the way the system is set up and the system expects you to use it in that way to make your money work for you okay but there's some banks that are owned by their members what's your thoughts on that um it's an oligarchic system uh vandogen it's an oligarchic system they it's like private um, um what do you call it investment companies right um, private hedge funds where sometimes they they allow things to be public for a while they make a ton of money and they they take it private now it's a whole bunch of money working for a select group of people that were in from the get-go right the banking system is 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 a fraud like it's 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 just giving power to the powerful more and more power to the powerful that's all it is i just hope my boss doesn't fire me while he told me that he has no work for me uh taco uh he doesn't have, do you have uh labor protection stuff there i know in canada there's a lot of people that do seasonal work right so during the spring and the summer where constructions 
construction going on all over the place in Canada in the winter some places is really hard right you can't really do construction outside so a lot of people and fisheries is like this too and stuff right a lot of people get into seasonal jobs and they work for a number of months and they have unemployment protection they pay into it and then during the downtime they get fired or laid off or right? laid off fired it fired I think has different legal definition right fired means you did something bad and they fire you because they don't trust you anymore laid off means there's there isn't enough work to carry you they get laid off and then they collect unemployment for a number of months until the industry picks up again and then they go back into work i'm not sure if where you are that's in place so if if it is uh, then you should look into it and if there isn't enough work and if you've worked long enough to be able to collect unemployment insurance uh as soon as you get laid off you should definitely file for unemployment and get money coming back right build a small service business until you have enough work to hire employees now yeah. or anything really right and if you don't really need to hire employees if you want to keep it on a down low as well right because hiring employees is another beast on its own right uh, it, it takes a fair bit of bureaucracy to be able to do your thing but it's a great advice if you love it like there is uh, I was talking with someone recently where um, they were talking about this cleaning service company that's in operating in my city right all it is is one person that's taking in the phone calls they've established themselves right they started cleaning houses and stuff like this and then you start hiring people right and then all they did was hire enough people to do the work that they were supposed to do and all they do now is sit behind the desk and get calls coming in for cleaning service requirements right and then they farm it out to all these people and they estimated that this person makes like five thousand dollars a day now right and they're a horrendous company and they don't pay their employees well and take on jobs that they don't have the employees to work for and stuff like this but that's what they do right you roll it over hi man captain soju that's actually very correct i got back my extra tax that i overpaid during the year for 2019 awesome and it's it, it can be a fair bit of money right few thousand dollars and few thousand dollars that's after taxes right so if you get back five thousand dollars you would have had to earn if you're in a 30 percent tax bracket five thousand <laughs> you would have to earn six thousand five hundred dollars right to get back five thousand dollars so it doubles up not doubles up but it's extra right do you think it's worth worth it to buy bitcoin um i'm i'm not buying any cryptos uh, i can tell you that if you need the money no it's not because it's not it is liquid but it fluctuates a lot so if you run into a hard time that if you need the money no matter what the price of bitcoin is you have to liquidate and if it's really low then you lose money if it's really high yeah it worked out for you right so one thing when it comes to investing money somewhere make sure you're not going out on a limb and you might need that money back um, right away or at a certain point right like there's hedge funds and uh, funds that you can invest in that they say you have to have at least a million dollars of liquid assets that way when you put money into their funds you don't come back the next day they say we need it right because these people that invest your money they actually have to make plans or an extended period of time they can't afford for people to put in money and pull it out the next day right some people say they have to lock it in for a year six months or a couple of years right well i want to be to be signed up uh in the working uh protection but he didn't or couldn't so i am working without the government knowing okay so you're working under the table okay hopefully he's just paying you cash taco so you're not declaring and stuff like this uh, be careful just uh don't make it uh you're trying to dig yourself out right uh, but you're acquiring experiences i mean that's what happens when you're working under the table when you're new to the job market you're trying to get experience and knowledge and how to do things right so you're building a trade which is the nature of the beast um, i would say start looking around as well build some other connections what do you invest in that's traditional 
just got here uh saucy how you doing <laughs> what do i invest in that's traditional uh my health uh, my education uh, i don't invest in funds anymore i don't invest in stocks anymore um traditional I, i'm not a do i invest in anything that's traditional i pay off my debts uh, as soon as as fast as i can accumulate them like sometimes i do accumulate debt right for whatever reason that happens life is life sometimes you accumulate that debt right so one of the more traditional things that i do if i accumulate debt i liquidate some assets comic books in general that's my asset i, I sell my comic books some comic books raise a little money pay off my debt right or i work extra hard take on additional clients for a few months work my ass off pay off my debt right uh, that's one of the traditional things that i do good talk man loving the tips i'm kind of a noob in the whole investment scene trying to get educated in that area yeah captain soju uh, take your time there's so many different disciplines uh, so many different disciplines you can invest in beware rrs can garnish wages yeah 100 percent. thanks beans uh beware whatever government wherever you live the internal revenue service or tax service or government can always garnish your wages not only that they could go into your bank account and empty out your bank account whatever i don't care which government which country you live in the government if they think you owe them money or whatever it is they have the right to go into your bank account and empty your bank account right they can't do it right away they have to give you some warnings and whatever but if you ignore their stuff they could take the money out now companies can't do that if you owe the well in my part of the world credit card like visa and mastercard money you can tell them to go kiss your ass right they still haven't passed laws that credit card debt cannot be written off right they might at some point like why are why did they make it much harder for students to declare bankruptcy in 2005 in the united states that's crazy right that's supposed to be one of the best places you can invest your money is your education it's great for the society period right but they made it more difficult for students that have accumulated debt to declare bankruptcy and you can right now you can't even declare bankruptcy if you're a student with student debt the student debt carry with you right so you could declare bankruptcy if you borrowed money to go party for two years but you can't declare bankruptcy if you borrowed money to go educate yourself for a couple of years that's the betterment for of, of all of society right it's a rigged system right they did that to keep the working class enslaved right i know i sound you know extremist but that's exactly what it is they 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 guaranteed loans the government came and guaranteed loans for people to go to get an education and the schools all of them are private institutions and they're in it for profit right they're there to make money right colleges universities almost all of them anyway they're there to make a ton of money right so the the deal that they cut with the government was the government came in and said oh we need more people that are educated the school said we're well, guaranteed the loans and will start spending more and hiring out adjunct professors and don't pay them any benefits or anything will open up more classes 90 percent of them being garbage classes in the monday night at the movies or wednesday night at movies or whatever it is and we'll educate your populace we'll give them a piece of paper to say they're they're smart they went to university for four years right and the government said okay sure and then we'll pass laws to make sure that People can't declare bankruptcy because we can't afford for our guaranteed loans to be not paid back right we have to balance our budgets right the government people said right on right on the people taking kickbacks the school said right on right on and you saw student fees go through the roof right and people still need an education so they kept on borrowing money and getting their education right they came out of People have been coming out of university and colleges for a number of years now 
$50,000 in debt, $30,000 in debt, $100,000 in debt, right? All of a sudden, no job. Oh my God. In my part of the world, you get six month interest free and then interest starts accumulating. Oh my God. <laughs> you got interest accumulating on $30,000 that if you declare bankruptcy, it's not cleared? Oh my God. <laughs> Whose bright idea was this? Right? Oh, the universities, the private companies are making tons of money, right? Oh, keep the population a slave. Yeah, keep get them working. Make sure they show up the next day to taco, get on their knees and put tiles in, right? Because they gotta pay that that debt, right? Meanwhile, they don't explain to you, hey, instead of spending fifty thousand dollars going into debt, getting a piece of paper that may be good, maybe not, right? Why not spend twenty thousand dollars, get your education at a slow pace, and look into investing a little bit and learning about finances and do some work experience and apprenticeship and stuff like this, right? There's a lot at play here. There's a lot at play here. What the first thing you have to understand, appreciate about what it means to be financially independent is figure out what type of system you live under, right? What are the pitfalls? What are the scams? What power does government have? What power do these corporations have? What power do these lenders have, right? What is this contract that you're signing? Figure out all that stuff before you sign away your life, right? I have a few stocks. Playing off that fast is good. Yeah. And I used to play the stocks. I have. I did options, lots of options trading. And it's straight up stocks and stuff like this. It's a, it's a legitimate way to gamble if you want to gamble and it's a legitimate way to invest for the long term if you want to invest for the long term but you better do your research there's a lot of disruptive innovation coming up that could throw a throw a wrench in the in the wheel right saint just germany how are you doing emma wari how's life hi chicho did you update your mic it sounds really good i i think i just you know what i'm just bringing it closer is right here uh, I'm tilting it in the right way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not messing around, right? I'm just going straight in. I try running some filters and stuff like this. Uh, the only time I'm running filters is when I'm doing the editing, right? Taking it in and trying to run. Uh, so most of the edited videos where you see things popping up, uh, those have a little filter running on the sound, right? Amigos, they found me. Haha, <laughs> the IRS took what they thought i owed them ah that's unfortunate yeah and that's they take what they want right it's a scam students loans are the worst yeah too many high school kids are tricked into thinking they need to get into mass at that in order to go to a, a four-year university when they don't even know what they want to study yeah uh spectral shot 100 percent, right and unfortunately a lot of parents are forcing uh pushing their kids to go get a university degree now i'm not against university degree i got a university degree and i'm very happy that i got a university degree and it allowed me to be where i am right now it allowed me to do geophysics i needed that piece of paper it it gave me credentials to be able to do what i'm doing right but i knew what i wanted to get into right and i worked my ass off and i when i got into the workforce man there wasn't like I was in demand because nobody worked as hard as I did. Like except for some of the people that I learned from, they they put me to shame sometimes, right? They were older than me. They were I basically learned from them, right? My my mentors, right? But whenever other people that were new to this industry, to geophysics, that came in try to do what we're doing, they couldn't handle it, right? Like we'd be working multiple hours functioning on three hours sleep but in the first few years anyway and later on as well but that's the type of job i got into that was the the industry that's how it functioned right it's not geared for everyone uh, so figure out what you love doing how you can function your cycle really your life cycle your health cycle your mental state of being can you function in a shift work type of environment can you function as contractor can you function as a seasonal worker can you function as someone that goes to work all year round five days a week eight hours a day what can you run your own business 
what is the best system that you will be happy to work in right that's very personal a lot of people don't think about that when they're trying to decide what type of job they want to get into or what type of career they want to have or what type of business they want to run right man i'm thankful for the free education in germany america sounds like a stressful place to get education like we pay here two for each semester but each semester costs around 300 euros man that's that's like not even half the books here uh average uni time is like six semesters in total for a bachelor degree so six times that is the price for the whole bachelor's degree that captain soju here you're talking 300 euros in canada depending on the program you're in you're talking two thousand dollars it used to be way cheaper right I, should i say two thousand dollars yeah it really depends what program you're in right anywhere between thousand to three thousand dollars right it's crazy game i play is uh, entropy universe in the game you can buy land deeds and earn taxes i bought four thousand usd of deeds the value went up eight hundred dollars on my assets in game and i earned about 12 percent return on investment good bad what do you think fantastic <laughs> oh hold on a second the value went up eight hundred dollars so it went from four thousand to four thousand eight hundred dollars and you're getting back 12 percent return on investment if this was the real world real money you're doing phenomenal now is it really good relative to the game that you're playing it really depends what's the average rate of return that people are making right this goes into differential accumulation if you do chicho differential accumulation there's a little intro video there that links up to a couple of other videos that we have here i'll link this up again i should have this handy all the time but for some reason i always search for it because it always comes up because it's extremely important right friend show accumulation chicho okay whatever you're investing in always keep the information in this video in mind as well as the sources that i've referenced in this video okay as well as the articles the original article that i've referenced that this works this is extremely important both on a personal level as well as a geopolitical level as well as running your own business as well as investing personal finance financial independence all of it okay it's the averages that count so in the game if the average rate of return for everyone playing the game is 20 percent and you're making 12 percent oh my god you're you're getting burnt you're losing your shirt right if the average rate of return in the game is three percent and you're making 12 percent right on in the limit you win right unless there's people that are making 100 percent, and slowly you'll hopefully adjust and make more than 12 percent, right like there's a video we put out there was a fund that opened up like a legit fund on wall street that was started off by a bunch of mathematicians right and well you can take a look at that video it's uh, uh i'll link it up later but it's it's basically these people started off um this fund in 1994 right bunch of mathematicians and for the first three two two three years they had the fund open to the public and after that they closed the fund it was only private and they had the fund going for 10 years right now average rate of return average, average in, inflation is supposed to be two percent per year right uh average rate of return on wall street if you invest i don't know what it is now that this it's all a bubble so it's probably like three to five percent or something like this right these people on average on a yearly basis the rate of return per year per year ended up being like 80 percent per year <laughs> what <laughs> right 80 percent average rate of return per year unheard of they did it for 10 years right so if you invest if you had invested like a thousand dollars with them you would have cashed out like a million dollars or something like it was, it was insane that 300 euro is basically for a semester ticket uh which you can use to travel basically half to germany with trains and bus and such 
so what the 300 euros basically for a semester ticket which oh you also get uh the free train passes and bus passes Fantastic. you probably get free health well in germany you probably do free get free health care as well we are a bit we are a little fortunate with student loans in the uk as they are not real loans really pretty in canada too you can't if you declare bankruptcy your student loans are not wiped clean you you have to pay back your student loans marginal trading can be bad i think that it is where you take out a loan to invest kind of which it really depends um, trading on margin basically cause called called trade having a margin call right or if your margin goes down and whatnot but if you're borrowing at and this is what the stimulus package did right if you're first in line right and you think if you can get your hands on government money that they were giving out to people for free right let's say one percent they were charging you if you can borrow money at one percent and make ten percent man whew, what a payout right but if you're borrowing money at five percent and your rate of return in free investment is four percent oh you're getting burned hard right so it really depends on what your borrowing rate is and what your rate of return is right i think trades are better option option instead of college and getting a loan and getting into debt taco it really depends on the trade and it really depends what part of the world you're in it really depends if you can um, take your trade and a lot of trades you can and go to another country or go to another region in your own country and work in that trade it really depends on the trade but i tend to agree trades instead of going to university and accumulating a hundred thousand dollars of debt in four years you can get into trades do a year of apprenticeship and start making money and for three of that four years you're actually generating money instead of going into debt so if you're someone's going to debt a hundred thousand dollars in four years and let's assume in three years that you're working i'm not counting the first year as making money right so three years that you're working which you should be making money when you're doing apprenticeship as well but let's assume you're not for three years that you're working let's assume you're making twenty five thousand dollars a year which is chump change right that's poverty level right you're making twenty five thousand dollars per year so by the time the person that graduated that has a hundred thousand dollars return a uh, hundred dollars hundred thousand dollars in debt you have seventy five thousand dollars that you made you also have living expenses and not but i'm not counting all that right let's let's assume twenty five thousand dollars is what you keep right which probably is not going to happen the difference is what matters is one hundred seventy five thousand dollars right and if you're investing your money as you're going you could be making more and whatnot so trades can be an extremely good way to go uh, but it really depends geophysics do you work in the energy field i not in the energy field i did i did some energy stuff some geotechnical stuff but i did a lot of uh environmental stuff and that was in the 90s i don't do geophysics anymore but that's my formal training i'm very happy that i did it it was an amazing experience learned a lot my work ethics well it was there before but in large part it was solidified doing geophysics the dolphin how are you doing like one book maxim how are you doing Jay's James David Sutton how's life Chicho what would you suggest is a good way for a newly graduated student to improve their finances um, pay off your debt all indications are short-term interest rates are gonna go up okay so if you can't pay off your debt another thing you should do is if you know a system well enough to be able to take a little bit of your money not all of it don't put all your eggs in basket in one basket take a little bit of money and roll that over into different things that's one way of doing it one of the things you can do depending on your knowledge right you can go online and buy things on the cheap cheap right refurbish them sell them and that's cash money coming to you pay off your debt right so there's people that in the comic book industry there's people that buy comic books and flip comic books and make money and uh you know they generate a certain income there's people that buy used furniture refurbish the used furniture sell that used furniture and it's good money and it's a hobby you do exercise and it's something they love doing so they are making money off of something they love doing so that's a couple couple of ways 
that you can improve your finances don't go don't get a car lease man you should have seen the number of people that i knew that would buy a brand new sports car bmw whatever mercedes whatever it was right and get a loan to buy an extremely expensive sports car when they were like in their early 20s i was like you guys out of your mind right or go lease a car oh my god i was like leasing is for companies that can write off write it off against their taxes and they would go sign a contract to lease a car don't go into credit card debt don't pay interest 30 20 10 percent if you're going into debt make sure whatever interest you're paying is less than six percent right in the game only one way to really make money is owning owning these unless you are very active in gaming yeah greetings Randall how are you doing 80 percent that's unreal uh, dude it's incredible and you know who those people were those are the people that for 2016 they funded both Hillary and Trump and they were one of Trump's major donors right and one of Hillary's major donors right incredible incredible 80 percent per year for 10 year period we looked at the numbers by the way here let me show you let me give you the video where we crunch these numbers okay where we looked at the rate of return um god i hope i can find the video <laughs> i'm just doing a random search i should have some of these uh the, the, oh here we go nice now I think we covered this in part two there's a part one to this okay so here's part two and i called titled this personal finance personal finance currency money economy this is part two gold s p superman income bitcoin and we look at the different rate of return for different investments you made and i talk about the fund in this video i believe if it's not this one is part one okay but i think it's this one yeah free healthcare too free healthcare too huge i'm glad i live in the eu <laughs> yeah daunted in canada too is i know so many people that are in major student debt major student debt right it's huge it's huge uni is even cheaper in uh, austria basically free for austrians within a certain time frame nice diversify 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 legendary rob boss i agree with legendary legendary raw boss and it doesn't mean diversify into different types of stocks right you can go into different industries sure but if it if the stock market takes a huge hit 95 percent everything is going to go down right have some cash handy but diversify basically means you're going to put some money in stocks go ahead if you want to play that game you're going to put some money in collectibles go ahead Put some money in that if you're going to keep some cash handy for sure keep some cash handy if you're going to put some money in uh, precious metals put some money in precious metals diversify into different systems <laughs> you can diversify within a system itself like the stock market but also diversify into different systems it's like having multiple revenue sources coming in right important important i invest in the stock trade at the moment i mostly play it safe and make about 20 to 30 percent profit each year which is fantastic randall 20 to 30 percent profit per year phenomenal right phenomenal now if you had bought tesla when it had 150 dollars like a few months ago now it's trading at 550 dollars that's about 350 percent return 450 percent return right which is fantastic right so you can go into different types of stocks as well track things and play with them right uh, but making 20 to 30 percent per year is phenomenal if you can do that on a consistent basis don't change anything don't go oh i can double it right make 60 percent per year forget about it if you're making 20 30 percent return per year on your investments you win <laughs> right as long as you're not chasing their carrot and it depends on the type of person who wants to work in trades yeah is anyone here working in a trade and would you encourage your own child to go into that trade um amigo i know people who work in trades and who have encouraged their kids to go into trades 
right? Do I agree with them all the time? Not necessarily. I think higher education is a good thing to have. I think it is extremely important to be well educated in whatever your natural language is and whatever, um, uh, what do you call it? Where, whichever country you live in, it is extremely important to be uh, literate in the language of mathematics, well literate in the language of mathematics. Those are two things that I, I would say invest in 100%, right? Um, and it really depends on the type of trade after that. It, it, the housing market has been seeing a boom for a number of years now. If the housing construction industry takes a huge plunge, and it does, it's a cyclic thing, there's going to be a lot of people that have worked construction for a number of years that are going to be out of jobs. All of a sudden, you're going to see the trades come down, the price that people are willing to pay for trades and stuff on the construction side, right? There are other, there are other types of trades out there. Yeah, Saucy says that's huge. 23% is huge, huge. Is it? I've only been doing it for three years. Dude, uh, Randall, if you're making 23% for th three years, you're doing phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, you're doing fantastic. And by the way, keep this in mind as well. If you're doing stock market, right now is a no-brainer for the last 10 years. Throw a dart, you could have put your money almost anywhere and made money, right? huge returns if you're making 20 to 30 percent without really knowing what you were doing or not taking any major losses be careful okay uh, the party doesn't last forever okay be willing to be able to function on a rate of return that's five percent if the market takes a tumble or you know hopefully it doesn't happen to you you go into negative return, right? Which is losing money. As I've gotten older, I've learned that the number one way people make money is learning a system that profits, then repeating it until it's no longer profitable. Saucy agreed 100%. And keep in mind that the system might be profitable, but it might be going through a cycle where it's not profitable for a while and then becomes profitable again, right? Collecting is one of these things collecting things is not a liquid place to be right all the time during during peak times sure you can liquidate but uh it's not always liquid Wabin, how are you doing it's been a while here's a funny anecdote the leftist anti-imperialist political party here in power enacted a law that enforced the usage of banking for salary payments and similar transactions so let me read that again that enforced the usage of banking for salary payments and similar transactions okay so they're forcing people to go through a banking system to get their to get their money to get paid right yeah which is basically they're trying to make everything digital so they know everything about you if there is no anonymity there is no freedom there is no privacy right digital currency is one of the most dangerous things that we face in our societies control wise anyway what is your opinion on the university system uh, james um it's a, i don't want to say it's a scam because there's knowledge to be had but the way the economic it's structured economically it's an enslavement system right now you can go to colleges and pay way less funds way less money than you do at top rated universities to get a better education right but you're not connected with the echelons of power and whatnot right so for the university degree for people most people a lot of people going to university they're getting the degrees they're spending a lot of money going into debt to get a piece of paper that is going to at best give them a job at mcdonald's if they haven't been automated out of that job right so you have to be wise about where you're spending your money right just because you love doing something as a hobby it doesn't mean you should go into a hundred thousand dollars of debt to get a piece of paper saying that you love this hobby right and you're really good at this hobby okay if you love a history then study history don't go into a hundred thousand dollars of debt to get a piece of paper that says you're 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 you've studied history for four years now what you can do is go into geopolitics 
or you can go into political science or you can go get your master's or get your MBA or get your PhD. So hopefully you go higher up, go into more into that so you can get a job with a government organization or with a private car. The, his, the jobs for people in history, last time I checked anyway, there isn't that much. And I knew a lot of people that were getting their history degrees, right? Educate yourself. Spend what you need to do to educate yourself in mathematics and the natural language that you speak and make sure you know those well everything else you could almost learn on your own you do need the piece of paper if you're practicing you're going to be a doctor you're going to be a nurse you're going to be an engineer you're going to be whatever right you do need that piece of paper but you can go through the system much faster if you already know the mathematics and you know your natural language well right you can write your essays well I collect antiques and various collectibles as well as an investment. Already made a healthy sum of money from it. Highly recommend it. Randall, I've been, <laughs> I'm with you on this. Uh, I've been recommending comic books, of course. I've been, because it's something I've invested in for 30, 30 plus years, right? But for example, Canadian art on average for the last 20 years, I believe, is given a, it's given a rate of return uh, on your investment of 25% or something, right? So whatever collectible you're getting into, uh, collectibles are an amazing place to invest money, uh, to liquidate some assets if you do need to raise money, as long as the cycle is on the upturn, not on the bottom, right? There's a lot of people liquidating on the bottom. That's why cash is king, right? Always keep a little cash handy. If you find someone or the market has come down and people are liquidating, buy them, right? There's a lot of people out there right now that are selling comic books on eBay that they bought huge inventories from comic shops that were going bankrupt and they've been sitting on them and selling them slowly over the years, right? That's a pretty good business model, okay? Tony Rumble, how are you doing? Yes, I don't have money. Am I still allowed to join the discussion? 100% Lester. You can join the discussion. I don't have money. I'm in debt. <laughs> I'm holding this discussion. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> anyway, sort of. I have a little bit of debt that I need to pay off. But <laughs> some, of the, some of the wealthiest people on this planet are in debt up the yin-yang, right? Oh, and just Timo, by the way. Timo, okay, cool. Timo, I would have read your name totally differently. Timo, how are you doing, Timo? America Maro, hello, hello, welcome to a live stream. Hannah, how's it going? Tink, Tink, how's life? I feel I should be, it should be law for kids to see employment rates. Yeah in the uh, correct field in five years 10 years 15 years after each degree course 100 percent. so so many out there just serve to enslave kids and everyone encourages it yeah and by the way uh just on what Tink says right if you do the research you can find out if the degree that you're getting has a high rate of placement right there are colleges universities trades uh, out there that actually advertise their placements for jobs right they say oh we have a hundred hundred percent graduate placement for jobs right that means a hundred percent of the students that get it get a degree also get a job now that's not the only thing you need to look at right how long does those do those jobs last what are they paying how much does the degree cost what type of interest are you paying what's the uh, how, how many years do you need to study to get your degree and all this jazz, right? So you do need to look at the, some of the other metrics, but everybody, whatever university, college, whatever you want to study, you should be able to find that information online of what the salary is, how much debt you're going to go into by the time you finish on average, what the placement uh, percent is for people who graduate with this degree right how fast do you get raises what type of jobs do you need to go to where they are right are they in your vicinity or do you have to move 
That's extra, extra cost, huge cost, right? I book her, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho and all. Won't, won't debt get economic incentive for those? Uh, won't debt get economic incentive for those who don't have many ambitions so that the country can be more competitive compared to other countries? Okay, I got to read that again. That doesn't make sense to me, that sentence. Won't debt give economic incentive for those who don't have many ambitions so that the country can be more competitive compared to other countries so are you saying those people who don't have any ambition if they go into debt that gives the country a boost in gdp and stuff is that what you're saying broker timo well it may be that way in the u.s but here in romania we really need those pieces of paper uh, uh timo in Canada, United States, you need those pieces of paper less and less for certain things. There's a lot of different types of jobs coming up right now in disruptive innovation and play where you don't need the piece of paper. Okay. However, there are tons of jobs out there still that you need that piece of paper. So I'm not against getting your piece of paper that you need to get, but do your research to find out if there's any jobs for you when you do get that piece of paper. Because if there's no jobs for you and you're servicing a debt of thirty thousand fifty thousand hundred dollars hundred thousand dollars a year you're in debt bondage debt servitude you don't want to be there the health effects of that the life effects of that are detrimental right oh and sorry for the batting no worries timo your english is better than my romanian right so kudos to you for being here man nah it's fine i think we all know uh what you're saying yeah okay cool hey isn't the u.s government like a couple of trillion in debt? couple of trillion u.s government is a uh, last i check i think it was 19 trillion dollars in debt right 15 years ago it was only five trillion dollars in debt or something they can still afford to send nukes and troops all over the world so it can't be so bad if you're printing the money yeah if you're issuing the debt yeah hey who wants to buy chicho debt <laughs> will, you, will you buy chicho debt <laughs> i'll give you chicho debt how much debt do you want <laughs> here's a hundred thousand dollars debt notification iou from chicho can you send me a hundred thousand dollars how valid is that debt right yeah i shouldn't have bought that pizza <laughs> <laughs> ten thousand dollar bitcoin so many years ago no i don't think anybody should have like look english is my hobby but i still need something we call uh cambridge exam that literally can mean if you get any job or not yeah timo you do need though you do need to go through those hurdles 100 percent. don't get me wrong i'm not telling people to drop out of school not at all if anybody's watched my streams you guys know education extremely important that piece of paper can be extremely extremely important just be wise about what you're giving up to get that piece of paper right but if the country you live in whatever system you live in in canada i tell everyone you need to get your high school degree if you're not getting your high school degree you're already the train left like a mile like ages ago if you don't get your high school degree man you're starting life on a bad footing bad footing right do you need a college degree depends what you want to what you want to go into is a college degree worth it yeah if you're not paying very much take some time go to school make some friends figure out what it is to to be able to study what you love right that gives you a tremendous amount of power but don't go into a hundred thousand dollar debt because of it right work part-time pay off service your debt work for the summer hard pay off your debt do it again right that builds character that builds your connections into the workforce because most people that go into university with the mindset of studying this 10 years later the odds are they might not be doing that right build connections and you don't necessarily have to build connections through school you can build connections through uh workforce right i don't feel like going 
uh, to college I want to join I don't feel like going to college I've always wanted to join the military if that's what you wanted to do it I personally don't recommend people join the military right because you're giving up the most precious thing that you have in this life which is your life you're signing a piece of paper saying you forfeit your your life based on what the higher powers want you to do right is that worth it not to me not to me even though i love military strategy military history i love uh, military board games right and computerized board game uh, computerized uh, uh, what do you call it computer games and stuff like this that are based on military and whatnot but i'm not willing to forfeit my life for it stuff is fracked up here yeah timo everywhere really in my field game games design programming a portion of the course uh, you can learn online instead of going to university awesome james yeah and that's people should be looking into that and taking advantage of that right you got a new job anna nice more money and less corporate bs awesome congrats my boss is horrible oh no <laughs> my boss is horrible he doesn't know my name i won't even ask what i do uh, he can't do my job yet he's my boss horrible company racist company as well oh no you got benefit higher pay right no corporate bs but you got a bad boss uh, hopefully that'll work itself out i have a friend a friend who may get fired today because she is getting more attention than her boss some bs i tell yeah politics and in, in the workforce right think oh by the way chicho what's your opinion of peter zahan i watched a, i watched one lecture with him the other day to me he seemed very pro-us making claims people can't possibly understand i don't know peter zahan here let me do a little image search on this guy uh just peter gonzalez peter zahan i don't know who this person is who is this person have i seen this person image i don't know this guy who is this guy <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who this person is. I'm Booker Chicho. Yeah, I see it that way. That makes people slaves, but it makes them work. They don't work with joy, but they work. So I don't see it as morally good, but I see it as strengthening. Uh, I Booker, um, in the limit, if people are only working to pay off debt, that's not healthy for a society because it's not healthy for them. So that puts a strain on the society, maybe through family, maybe through health issues, maybe through mental issues and all that jazz, right? If your only incentive to work is so that you don't go bankrupt, that's not a healthy system and that's not sustainable, right? 19, 19 trillion, uh, Ameri Ameri Camaro, 19 trillion in debt. Uh, as far as I checked, you can do a little search, it's around there anyway right at least in the national sense yeah broker it really depends would would our societies be healthier if people weren't in that that servitude like there's people sitting in the united states in jail because they can't pay a ticket that's not healthy for a society that's maybe good for the corporations to get slave labor through chain gangs but not healthy for society good education here in germany is for free yeah i started to play with cryptos when bitcoin was sub ten dollars but this has always been fun for me crypto market is more of a casino 100 percent, since it doesn't have any regulation and the exchanges can be the market makers without any risk yeah it, it is a casino right uh, wall street is a casino as well yeah i'm in north dakota maybe i can meet you somewhere ten thousand dollar debt holy crap so you're saying my masters in classical accordion performance isn't going to pay off <laughs> now one one thing will pay off wabin if you get uh, uh oh did we get a troll let me check this out oh uh, okay i'm gonna do a little time out and 
Here's another one. Clurinino. I'm timing you out as well. Just one word stuff that we don't know. Boink. Out. Uh, just to let you guys know, right now it doesn't look like... Oh, Tink, you're here. Nice. Oh, he's a geopolitical commentator. I assume you might know him. No, I didn't know him. I'm going to scroll back up again just uh, just because I have to scroll down really speedy Gonzalez and I'm sorry if I timed you out if you're not a troll but I saw a whole bunch of text coming up Poof. Uh, next time I see that ban right I used to be pretty chill on the ban <laughs> now I'm pretty hardcore I guess <laughs> right <coughs> chocolate dark chocolate and tangerine nice I support people to life with to live without debt but there are so many people who only work when they are forced to do it i broker i tend to disagree right our economic system the way we're set up uh, is very flawed so i've i've never had a student that hasn't been passionate in something right but unfortunately they don't have the means or the understanding and the infrastructures in there for them to turn their passions into a business model or get into the workforce right so i've never met anyone really that just wants to sit on a couch and have moss growing on them right the bad boss is in my old job oh the bad boss is in your job okay the new boss will hopefully be better awesome oh, Hannah. then that's a win-win and birdie sums it up birdie agree not all debt is bad you need you need to be smart with it yes like i said i'm in debt a little bit it had to happen right so once the situation was over now I work towards paying off that debt you're debt free and then you can go about your business right sometimes it's necessary oh he's the commentator guy yeah i don't know him tank comasta is that spanish 22 trillion the u.s owes 22 trillion <laughs> holy shit. excuse my language <laughs> so it's gone past 19 trillion last time i checked chicho it's the fundamental question for me that i haven't answered yet technological progress always has its price of um, general health and happiness is it worth it or not i don't know yet myself sweet just ate some chocolate and pear nice chocolate and pear is delicious chocolate and any fruit really <coughs> for me the talk uh, my take on technological progress always worth it there's growing pains for sure there are people infrastructures companies governments that don't you know try to slow down the technological progress of a society or sometimes try to speed it up to their advantage so that's why i believe in an open society that's why i believe in an anonymity for the individual and transparency for those in power right that's the ideal society i want to live in individually we have 100 percent privacy and anonymity but we have complete full transparency of governments and corporations right chocolate and tangerine is always a good combo always a good combo did you actually read all those books uh or are they props no they're not props <laughs> they're, they're they're not props the ones back here are my partners there's a lot of nursing stuff here and healthcare stuff and a lot of herbal stuff and a lot of food stuff a lot of a lot of growing food and lots of stuff uh comic books I've, i pretty much read everything here uh, i've read probably well most of what's up here uh, i've read i don't know two-thirds of what's here uh, up there i don't know there's uh, there's a lot of books up top i have if you've seen that uh, some i've read a lot of math and engineering books and stuff like that i inherited um and those most of them I haven't read they're above me but i know the people that read them so most of my books have been read most of them 
if not by me, by someone else, right? That I knew. <laughs> clarify, 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 right? Technical progress is always going to happen because we're inquisitive and want to improve our way of life, yeah? Dice power. Even if you're not in financial debt, you're in a sort of a time debt. If your time is exchanged for things to merely sustain your existence and not to improve it, yeah. Well put, by the way, dice power. I'm going to read that again. Even if you're not in financial debt, you're in sort of a time debt. If your time is exchanged for things to merely sustain your existence and not to improve it. Yeah. And that comes into play in our current economic system, the way it's planned out, right? A lot of people have to have to work. Like they need that money coming in every two weeks to be able to sustain their lives, right? That's not a healthy system. But you can look at what happened after the Industrial Revolution and after the Great Depression. The lowest classes suffered for an entire generation. Yeah. Trump has raised that two, two million since he came. Uh, I think you mean two trillion, most likely. Obama raised that, I think, 10 trillion. <laughs> and it's two terms, right? Bush raised it, I don't know. It's not it's not how much is raised by it's the percent that is raised by right So how much is it growing on a percentage level the absolute number doesn't really mean much I find the biggest flaw in our economic system with our regulation laws and corruption in my view the capitalist system isn't flawed and inflation monetary system isn't flawed but because the central banks are de facto bitches of commercial banks then it's all flawed and the public has to fix the commercial banking yeah the banking system is is the main one of the main culprits of the dis or destructive economic system it, it, the, the banks for sure as general smedley but sir butler would say all wars are bankers wars right be honest Richo. you went into debt to pay for the 2020 decades worth of beer <laughs> grooming supplies to whom in the u.s uh, debt to mainly internal debt to u.s corporations and whatnot um trillion plus is to uh china whatever it is but china's been reducing that a little bit some to external but mainly internal for what i know anyway uh amigo said the life was even harder before industrial revolution industrial revolution created stability even if it was with great price paid by health and happiness but before that uh if the season season was bad and your crop didn't uh give fruit then you just died a uh, broker the one thing is so we're talking about ag agrarian agricultural society right if you go to hunter gatherer some people will say it wasn't that bad right so it depends on the period how far we go back i want i want to my math skills where would you suggest i start you want to improve your math skills uh james it depends where you are right now like what level of mathematics do you know do you know how to uh, graph functions do you know how to do you understand statistics do you do you know what a linear function is do you know how to deal with fractions um it depends on the level right to your mask are you saying you want to improve them yeah on deficit oh you provide a link on the deficit let's check it out Boop. thanks Dante mm -mm -mm. so da -da 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 Obama kicked it up a lot lot and then every year it was lower less than five billion the u.s budget deficit has more than doubled since 2015. The, oh this is the deficit uh dante we're talking about the u.s debt uh not not necessarily deficit but this this is related to it for sure right uh, cool funny that uh 2007 it was so low compared to like if you look at this thing uh, the whole chart it was during uh, Obama came in in 2009 so the almost the lowest deficits per year were under Bush right 2007 and I don't I can't remember what it was before then right thanks for that Dante 
reminder usd is a little ponzi all fiat currencies are ponzi scheme but i think you us dollar is gonna uh, improve a little bit sorry if someone asked already was af uh, the, how does it come that the usa has so much debt and why can they make more and more without anyone saying stop um that's a huge question <laughs> lester that's gigantic one of them is um people trust the u.s government right so when the united states comes and sells um, what do you call it the notes and stuff like this they sell debt to the world and they say okay or well, in the next 10 years or we're going to sell you five year i don't i don't know what the increments are five year debt 10 year debt whatever debt period it is people trust that the united states is going to make those debt payments right so for example uh who f who defaulted who's the, who was the last country that defaulted in one of their loan uh their international obligations argentina turkey um a greece in the eu right uh so there are countries that default on their debt people trust that the united states is going to pay their debt right so if they need there's lots of money in play in the world right and people who have lots of money they need to get that money working for them right so let's assume you have a million dollars extra that's just sitting around now you can't have fiat currency just sitting around it's good to have some cash but if a million dollars sitting around 10 million dollars sitting around or 50 million 100 million dollars sitting around you need to move that money around you, you need you need to get that money generating certain amount of interest right so let's assume from 100 million dollars that you have now you're not going to put all your eggs in one basket right let's assume you take 20 million dollars and put in the stock market right you're playing just the averages right so 20 dollars in the stock market. let's say you take uh 10 million dollars and buy some precious metals and you do this with different systems and you want something stable you want to make sure you get a certain amount of interest back that that money is definitely going to be paid back you buy u.s government bonds right you buy u.s debt that pays you i don't know what the interest rate is on it one percent two percent three percent i don't know what it is right and you put your money in there and five years later you're guaranteed you were getting that much interest per year that's where you get money there's money going around in the world and needs to place to park right people believe that the united states parking it with the u.s government is a safe place to park it safer than many countries by the way chicho do you think that capitalism is the best economic system possible or there are better alternatives uh we don't live in the best economic system possible right now not even close if you want to call this system a capitalistic system i call it i i don't know oligarchic i, I don't know what you would call the system a technocracy plutocracy oligarchy what do you call the system yeah but the population during hunter gathering period was a lot different we would need to kill most of the people to go back to effective hunter gathering period. Uh, yeah I, it's not possible now for sure right so one thing the agricultural system did was seriously increased the population of humanity right we need to go into outer space well first it is just basic math or algebra or trig <coughs> America, uh, America, a Camaro, America Camaro. Uh, if you need basic algebra and stuff, uh, there's lots of resources available online. Uh, if you want, you can go to my website. I have a whole bunch of videos that start off with the real number set and teach you adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, knowing how to move around an equal sign, which is ridiculously important, right? Which is basically solving equations. Which is really just isolating a variable so if you do if you go to my youtube channel here youtube doing youtube my youtube channel pops up if you go to the playlist go into either asmr math playlist or go into the language of mathematics playlist i have 100 plus videos on both of them and find some of the most basic stuff and start there if you need help let me know i'll direct you to the right videos and there's lots of other resources available online obviously right can you tell me what would happen if everyone with money depo deposited in a bank 
wanted to rightfully withdraw it at the same time a bank run <laughs> that's what happened we've already had some of those i would say i have a high high school level math skill okay well the debt is influenced by the deficit yeah that was the financial crisis yeah for obama yeah but it, i wouldn't call it a financial crisis that was a scam you have to be a mod to post links yeah you have to be a mod to post links tony this is the chart you're looking for you can definitely post it on uh, our discord page okay so algebra i start by paying attention in class uh, memorize the formulas and if you do like my teacher makes me practice a problem on your free time yeah post them in discord or link it to me yeah thanks dante you're on it right away no worries tony it's just uh, you know it's a patrol prevention mechanism right it's basic easy saying but it's improved my math skills a lot that is the unavoidable ugly relative of inf uh, inflation monetary system booker yeah like our current economic system is built on debt right it built on debt 100 percent right so debt is not necessarily a bad thing what you go into debt for is extremely important right and you have to time your debt and who you go into debt for is extremely important and when you go in debt is extremely important if you went into a major debt in the 1980s you were screwed rate of inflation base was like 18 percent huge my god it, it's crazy and credit cards at that point we're still charging like 28% interest. Right now, the core inflate, the base inflation is what? Two, 3%. And the credit card debts are still charging 28%, 20, 25%. How is that even allowed? Right? Bamboo hats, how are you doing? I normally have like 50 or $60 in cash <laughs> just in case no credit. Yeah, that's a great idea. Have some cash. If the monetary system would be uh, deflation, then it would be even easier for rich to stay rich you don't need to have ideas on how to invest your money you just need to sit on your lazy ass and you get richer to a certain degree to a certain degree we live under crony capitalism 100 percent. i like using crony capitalism personally but it gives capitalism a bad name right not that it doesn't deserve it because there are people who've it's like communism has gotten a bad name because of USSR and other so-called communist countries that weren't really communists were dictatorships, right? Hmm. Is capitalism even a thing anymore? I thought it just died out. No, it hasn't died out yet. And there's other systems uh, than, capital, uh, than capitalism, probably much better systems. Most government run uh, this uh, pedestal that encourages people <coughs> think something to save up rather than becoming financially literate capitalism is the current ruling economic system no i'm yeah and dante is right capitalism is the current ruling economic system and it's a system that's across the board everywhere like Russia's capitalist, China's capitalist, US is capitalist, Europe is capitalist, Africa is trying to be capitalist, South America more socialist right now, but it's more dictatorship now. Uh, South America, Latin America is a shit show, uh, and Africa is a shit show, right? Because of outside influence mainly, right? I'm good at math. Yeah, out of space sound good. To me, we would need to use our available terrestrial resources more efficiently. 100% agreed on that, like waste management. What is currently done just by throw away and forget mentality. Yeah, it's insane. And it won't be re uh, replaced easily. Yeah, capital. it's not going to be replaced easily. So there, there are places that are trying to replace capitalism, and they're having a seriously hard time, either internally or from external forces. Yeah. I meant true capitalism, voluntary exchange of goods between people. That doesn't exist right now. There's there's middlemen, governments, corporations, patents, copyrights that are being extended up the yin yang to enslave the population and give more power to these 
corporate oligarchs that control our governments, right? What we have right now would be something closer to mercantilism, I think. I bet that I, I've looked up mercantilism multiple times and I still uh, need to look it up every time the definition. Let's look it up. Mercal, mercantilism. I'm going to look it up. Mercantilism is a national economic policy that is designed to maximize the exports and minimize the imports of a nation. These policies aim to <coughs> aim to reduce a possible current account deficit or reach a current account surplus. Is it full on mercantilism? I wouldn't say it's full on mercantilism. I bet that it takes like five to ten generations when our current garbage dump sites will cost uh, cost really much so if you want your grand 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 grandchildren to live good then start buying up garbage dumps a lot of resources there that can be uh, re-neutralized in the future I wouldn't buy garbage dumps personally there's not enough fiat to cover for everyone if they are um withdrew their funds at the same time no and you got to remember throughout history there's all there's there has always been jubilees where everyone's debt is forgiven right or not everyone's but a huge chunk huge percent of the population's debt is forgiven right we're long overdue for one of those things our money is just numbers in a <coughs> in a bank computer backed by nothing yet people think still think of fiat as real money uh, to, uh tony i wouldn't say it's a bank by nothing it's bank it's uh backed by trust it could be false faith trust in the system but that's what it's given it value right once the trust factor starts teetering tottering then you're going to see some serious changes taking place Like the people collecting the money yeah well 28 percent interest yeah i have heard uh lechtenstein doesn't have external debt which is amazing that's cool pretty sure it's pronounced mercen i think it's mercantilism mercantilism is capitalism with tariffs it's not an economic system yeah it doesn't it's Yeah, I wouldn't say it's an economic system. Mercantile is a national economic policy. Yeah, policy is the right word. That is designed to maximize the exports and minimize the imports of a nation. Yeah, it's a government policy, a centralized policy. So Dante is correct. I don't think you would call the economic system. It's policy. I'm sad, not rich enough to buy a garbage dump. But when I get the chance, then I will. Uh, if you buy a garbage dump, you're going to be responsible for the environmental damage that a garbage dump is creating. And working as a geophysicist in the 90s, where I've mapped out a lot of water contamination, water plumes coming up garbage dumps, you don't want to own a garbage dump. The liability associated with owning a major source of pollutants for your surroundings especially with the environmental laws kicking in that's a one-way trip to bankruptcy okay i don't care how much metals you think they're in there all right hi cutie hi zoot how are you doing long time no no watcho how can you have such a cool beard <laughs> i eat i eat mandarin chocolate I'll make a Mandarin dark chocolate sandwich. Here we go. <laughs> Mandarin and a dark chocolate sandwich. Check it out. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that, gang. Let me do this. I dropped my chocolate. I'm going to do it again. I laughed too hard. There was too much. There we go. <laughs> it's got It's got raspberries in there, too. love your politics still love you so i won't show you 
There is no anecdote for kindness. Awesome. Thank you for popping by. There are a number of vast countries that run on a budget surplus. Hey, Chicho. Hey, Seal. How are you doing? Do you think there will be another stock market crash soon? I don't know if soon is the right word. It really depends what you consider soon to be. There will definitely be a stock market crash in the next 10 years. Is that soon? The odds are there will definitely, well, I won't say definitely, but the odds are there will be a stock market crash in the next five years. I'd bet on that, right? But there's a saying that says the market can stay unreasonable longer um, than you can stay liquid, right? Could there be a crash <coughs> in a year? I don't think we're going to have a crash until the elections. After the elections, anybody's bet. I wouldn't be in the market after the elections, personally. I wouldn't be in the markets right now, actually. Germany, Austria, Norway. They're on a budget surplus, yeah? But it's not doing wonders for their economies. No. You need to get public funding to help you out in managing the garbage dump though you can already extract landfill gas there it's not easy but doable i love the idea a broker regarding extracting gas from landfills now some of you, those of you who don't know garbage dumps like don't live near a garbage dump don't live downstream from a garbage dump right don't live upstream from a garbage dump because the airflow might be going that way right i've been on garbage dumps where a year before well we're doing environmental we're doing geophysics so we're doing non-intrusive but one of the junk dumps i was in in the 1990s there and this has happened in other garbage dumps as well but one of the garbage dumps were in 1990s doing geophysics survey non-intrusive trying to map out the garbage plume coming out right our uh, water plume coming out going into the aquifer contaminating people's wells and stuff like this at that garbage dump the year before people had there was a drilling boreholes trying to map out the garbage dump and get get a feel for what the, uh, the underground uh, rock structures were like right so there was a drilling crew there and the geologists were there the um what do you call it the water person was there and stuff like this they drilled into the landfill and gas came up invisible gas killed everyone right toxic gas i forget what the gas was so a lot of these landfills have like horrendous stuff in there personally i would not invest in any company that was into buying landfills and extracting out the resources you don't know what's in there you're eating healthy and then rewarding yourself with the chocolate <laughs> the chocolate chocolate is healthy right chocolate is not a bad thing the idea of making wealth from trash has some nobility in it uh, somehow. That part, yes. But um, recycling is is in the limit. It's not going to work. We have to reduce. It's got to be huge, right? You reuse. We have to build things that will last much longer than we are. It can't be a disposable society. I protect, uh, predict the correction within the year. People have been predicting a crash, and me included, for the last 10 years. Right? I like the idea of moving to Iceland. No garbage dumps in Iceland. No garbage dumps in Iceland? Hmm. I'd be surprised if there's no garbage dumps in Iceland. Gas from landfill. We don't even utilize the methane off dairy farms yet. And that would be much easier to do than cap a landfill. Yeah. And by the way, Beans, I think there are landfills that have been capped where they're extracting out the gas. There were a couple of places, I believe, in the 90s that I went to landfills that had done that. One of the landfills were at, they put grass on it. And it was a kid's playground above it. What? They built a kid's playground above a landfill. I couldn't believe it. 
where I see difficult problems, I see opportunities. But if I would be rich enough, and then I would try to hire you or someone similar to you to lead the project. Someone who worries about it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> I'll, I'll look into managing your landfill, extracting out the resources. Stock market crashes follows an inverse uh, cubic power law. 12.8% chance crash in any given six month period. Very cool that I can say that to a, to, a, to a Twitch streamer that knows what that means to a certain degree. Inverse the, the cubic, I know, I know the general gist of it. I haven't looked into how legit those numbers are, by the way. Is it 12.8%? Is that, uh, let's check it out. Stock market crashes follows an inverse cubic power law. 12.8% chance crash in any given six month period. But is that a rolling average? 12.8%? Uh, or is that what it is right now, Zoot? I'm curious what the what the relative thing is. Like, what was it? I would love to see the historical thing on this in 2006, 2007, and 2008, right? One of the metrics I like, I like doing, or I used to like doing, is when uh, toll, 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 tolling average. Okay, tolling average, tolling over how, what's the period? If I'm understanding that correctly. But one of the things I love looking, looking at where I would buy puts on as soon as, not as soon as, but when a stock started going exponential, but not on a linear scale, on a logarithmic graph. So when a stock, there are stocks that start going exponential on a log graph, right? Or semi-log graph. Once they start going exponential on a log graph, short the damn thing, right? You want spicy? Get blazing in buffalo wild wings and eat them. Like you, you bop, 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 bop. okay, let me go back up here. That plan seems to be growing in a trajectory away from the light. I don't have much to add to the conversation at that in the stream. Olive, you're very, very, uh, what do you call it wise wise human being but what do i know is that that's not normal behavior for it is not because every time we stream we finish streaming i flip this around and do this <laughs> right so this is it's posture after the stream but while we're streaming i do this right because I like the way that looks. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Olive, you, you have a very technical mind. Very smart. Very smart. You're the first person that said that, by the way. Garlic is so spicy when it's raw. It's so spicy. Oh, it's spicy. Beans. We do utilize it. I have a friend who had a farm that utilizes around one um, megawatts of it really i think uh, one mw is megawatts isn't it estonia nice from stock market birth to now from stock market birth to now is uh 12.8 percent that's the average for all of the whole stock market wow so they must have the numbers rolling averages for an extended period of time so if you look at it for a 10 year period five year period years too low uh this is for a six month period right this is for the crash by the way the 12.8 percent so if it's for a six month you should look into like three year average so if you're looking at three year averages or five year averages uh or even you can even look at the six month average uh, six month period right so if that number probability of a crash is sitting at 25 percent now then that's double what the average rate was since the beginning of keeping track so you'd be more inclined to short the market then if it's sitting at five percent then man buy 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 right that's cool thanks zoot by the way thanks for that yeah man livestock industry can be a lot more uh, uh effective 
uh, efficient maybe the friend sold the farm to foreign investors though because he liked to fish and work the minimal but loved his ideas cool this truly to read the chat too is trying to read. but why try to beat the market it's too time consuming for any human to do it depends i pr like for me if when i was doing trading uh, in the markets and stuff it was a full-time basis okay you I did other things I did geophysics and stuff like this but my daily thought was the market because you have money in play it's fluctuating all the time so if you're investing somewhere where there's high risk and you're playing with the markets you need to be focused on it right so yeah it's time consuming that's one of the reasons I don't do it right now aside from I hate system right you know i don't even like politics i'm just here because i like hearing about it cool ha i caught it i can sleep well now <laughs> <I'll live> awesome <laughs> i like this emote awesome uh one of our uh former mods made this he's taking a break right now huge thank you to casey for making these emotes that we have huge thank you to him He's one of the people um he's the first uh, one of the people really that got got us set up on twitch with the emotes and discord got me going to discord and did a lot of the background stuff and uh explained to me how this stuff works so we're indebted to casey for uh doing all this work and the banner that we have on twitch and uh that i'm using on twitch facebook uh, twitter and all this plus uh he made he made for uh, for us uh, so fantastic were you a technical uh, um, analyst guy with trading uh, I did some technicals just personal I never did training I never work with um, day traders I never work with any company I just know mathematics so I just went into it and I looked at the metrics and stuff my, uh, myself uh, I made a lot of money I lost a lot of money right learn from both experiences and once you do that you learn the system and you're like ah oh, that's how it works damn what a corrupt system wow what a joke <laughs> right hey yachicho how are you doing splits how are you doing how's life okay yells out as loud as i can thank you casey thank you casey hey what's up chicho Hanol M M Hanol doing good. How are you doing? I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Caught up with chat. Nice. Woo. Been going hardcore. Oh my god, we're into two hours already. Crazy, crazy. Time flies. Time flies. Wow, we're almost at two hours. I've always been more of a um, instinct and fundamental trader. Uh, ta makes me my head explode that is also why it's so interesting to hear the math tutoring streams you have here nice yeah and i did instinct as well right like for tesla i own tesla stock when it was trading at like 25 dollars <laughs> right people were like oh why do you own that i'm like dude tesla you guys crazy this is like oh their numbers are horrendous yeah but this is the future this is this this is this right i don't own any tesla now but i got into it when it was like 25 right that was just instinct just looking at disruptive innovation coming and where it might go right <clears throat> only mention the six month average because you did you did it first i agree it probably won't happen until after the election real estate bubble will most likely go boom for birth. yeah and that's the that's the one i'm watching zoot i'm watching the real estate that's the one i'm watching the closest a real estate and i'm also watching uh, contagion globally what's going on in certain countries certain countries are they're falling bam they just collapse boom they're done boom it's going right i'm watching that and i'm watching real estate we'll see where it goes 
but never made real money with trading more of a game uh, metal working and construction have been my main field awesome awesome trading is you gotta be on the ball you gotta be on the ball what you the way you have to make money off trading is mitigate your losses it's not really how much your the well it is how much your rate of return is how much you're making but if you're making 50 percent but if you make investments that drop 50 percent that, that you got to make a hundred percent to get back to where you were so what you need to do when it comes to trading is reduce your losses right cut the loser losers off boom 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 get rid of them right take the hits early on don't ride out the losses right because those are the ones that are the killers right time flies when you're having fun time flies when you have fun tesla the car company the car company yeah do you think financing for nice cars is always a bad idea if you can afford it uh as a personal individual yes okay if you own a company and you can write it off against your income or your revenue coming in from the company it's okay if you can write off financing against your salary you can do it play around with it but if you're writing it off against your salary then it has to be some kind of business that you're running so how are you gonna write off a lease on your salary if it's not a business right and you don't want to mess around with the government with the tax systems and stuff like that. that that's asking for trouble right play the game legit right so in general for almost in the every single individual that i've seen that's leased a car a bad idea bad idea too much third world immigrant and no i disagree um you could you could flip that around when you say too much third world immigration you could flip that around on the flip side of the coin is too much western intervention into the third world as forcing all this immigration because those countries are being destroyed or the corporations are going in there and looting it right um, it's a much more complicated game than that much more complicated hey quick question chicho have you read the alchemist uh, the alchemist the alchemist the alchemist the alchemist uh, the Al i don't know i don't think so no i am uh, no i haven't read it who does that refer to i'm trying to figure out what that refers to uh, but i haven't read it no i've looked into alchemy i've read lectures on alchemists and stuff like this but i've never i don't i've never read a book called the alchemist thank you for hosting uh splits uh, i bet that uh, M mr musk does uh, deliberate public mishaps because he is playing uh, playing his own company stock through invisible sources a uh, broker right now what we've seen in tesla stock <laughs> if people were here like a few months ago we talked about tesla a little bit and tesla came down and it was around 180 90 and i said oh it's looking pretty sweet right now it's looking pretty sweet even though the numbers that we're putting out were horrendous right it was pretty looking and some people were like oh tesla scares me and stuff like this there was a couple of people that know their stuff and i said yeah but it looks pretty sweet and what we're seeing right now is people were shorting the crap out of tesla and we're seeing major short coverage shoot tesla close to 600 right now is it gonna stay there it's done a triple like it's done pretty awesome so there's a lot of people right now probably jumping on a short bandwagon trying to short it right now right is is there still room for short coverage panic to take place we'll see we'll see it's a fun game no matter what as long as you're not getting burned it's a fun game has too many accidents for a guy that clever mm, this confuses me works for tesla probably owns a tesla as <laughs> that i think hmm, not gonna judge i personally wouldn't buy tesla stock right now and i wouldn't be shorting tesla right now the eccentric by the way gang uh, thank you for the follows thank you for the subs i'm sorry if i've missed any of the follows and subs it pops up but usually i'm Blah, 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 and I miss them, right? That's true. 
but why would Europe suffer because Israel wants America to fight their wars? Mm, we're not going to do politics. Ah, this is novel. Polo Colo, the Alchemist. Great book. I just saw your book collection back there. Haha. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm going to highlight this and put it on my to read list or look up list anyway. Thank you for the recommendation, by the way. Let me which let me pin this and I'll take a look at it later. Okay. In the Bible it says whoever opposes the land of God shall be punished. Not the exact words. But, uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that either in this stream. <laughs> Trump 2020. Chicho, do you know any other languages than English? Yeah. Do you think it's uh, beneficial to learn other languages? Yes. I mostly want to do it because I'm curious and it's fun. Got my eye in French. Uh, all of I highly like I, I speak Armenian and I speak Farsi. I'm not very good at them. I don't know how to read and write them. It's only English. Like this is my best language by far. Right. But every language you speak gives you a different perspective on a certain situation. Right. Like mathematics is a language and it gives you a mathematical perspective on whatever situation you're looking at. So learning new languages is, is a very good thing. French is a, a lovely language, kind of different. Yeah, difficult, but fun. Yeah, I, they try to teach us French and I never learned it. Uh, so because Europe goes along with whatever America does and European corporations are also looting Africa. Yeah in a big way france being one of the biggest right like i have zero sympathy zero sympathy for european governments complaining that the mass immigration coming in is hurting their economies or social structures well maybe they shouldn't have gone into other countries and destroyed them and forced mass immigration maybe they should stop their corporations from looting african countries and allow the countries to keep some of the resources there maybe they should stop committing genocide and starting coups in countries right it's littered the history books history is littered by european countries and western powers and other powers messing around in africa and destroying millions of lives right it's happening right now what the hell is france doing in mali let alone libya and all the other neighboring african countries right I just ordered the alchemist like a week ago. Nice olive. Tesla keychain on the bar will get you a date quick in Vegas. <laughs> well, be a nerd like me. Is that so hard? <laughs> awesome. Estonia is my main language. Estonian is my main language, but we only have 1.3 million population, so most of us speak three plus languages. That sounds like Switzerland, right? I personally also speak finnish russian a little german and a little french and now start learning uh um, swedish in a slow tempo nice and yeah english i probably speak the best besides estonian awesome i tried for go right i know <laughs> dante don't do it man you know what i do go off on right yeah we'll keep this non-political as much as we can we just had like a couple of minutes of political um and I, what do you guys think? Should we load this one on YouTube? I think we'll load this one on YouTube as well. Okay. We'll load it on BitChute and we'll load this on YouTube as well because the main topic of discussion was finance, personal finance. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think we should be okay loading this on YouTube as well uh, so we won't get nailed by the censors and get our videos taken down and have our channel banned. Yeah, but speaking Finnish is like speaking German Russian. Is that what it is? <laughs> He's laughing. Amigos. <laughs> Dark chocolate and Mandarin sandwich. See those red things in there? Those are like raspberries. And there's a little bit of nuts and it's got like a mint flavor to it. My pleasure, amigo. Thank you guys for being here. bamboo you lost your appetite i suggest mandarin and dark chocolate it's fantastic i love learning english 
I give it, it gives me a new perspective. But moreover, it is so vast with plenty of synonyms, which I find so intriguing. Awesome, Olive. I found English is a difficult language to learn. It is, and French is extremely difficult. For me, they were trying to teach me English and French at the same time. Oof, the confusion. <laughs> I had sacrificed French, learn English, right? Amigo, amigo, no way. Finnish is uh, ancient Estonian. Most Estonians speak Finnish. Quite good, okay. But Finns rarely speak Estonian. My Estonian teacher in high school told that it, wa it was because our language had similar roots, but Estonian kept on evolving. Really, interesting. I don't know if you read this, but for the third time, goodbye, Chicho. Bye bye, Americamaro. <laughs> okay, gang, let's call it a stream. Two and a half, two plus hours. And <coughs> I'm still trying to get the chest cleared up. Uh, and I think these streams are helping. I'm reading, I'm talking, and. Um, We'll try to kick us up into 80% so we can get into full production. But I'm getting pretty close, getting pretty close. Just need Bichu to cooperate. Okay. I'm fluent in Somali, English, and a bit of Polish. Nice. Thank you, Chicho, for the stream, and bye-bye, everyone. Quality time, as always. Quality time. Thank you very much for the conversations, everyone. And if you're game on Sunday, we're doing a math stream, I believe, from 2 to 4. Okay. Um, if you check our Patreon page or Discord page, I've made the announcement there. So if you can make it, uh, we'll do a little mathematics on Sunday and uh, see where that takes us. And if you have math questions, if you know people that need help with mathematics, uh, send them our way and uh, I'll try my best to help them out. And there most likely will be other people here uh, that are doing a little bit of mathematics. Plenty of non-biased and non-partisan political forums. Here it would be a death sentence. <laughs> Ah, okay, I can stay till the end of the stream. I want to learn Russian too. Russian would be amazing. I'm way over my head, I know. Thanks, bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Dante, taking care of business. Thank you, Tink, uh, if you're still around, for taking care of business. And uh, everyone, for the conversation. And I'll see you guys on Sunday if you can make it. Bye, everyone. And our Discord page. Hope you have a fantastic weekend.